Hello and welcome to part five, i.e. the finale of the one week rebuild of the LS Miata. We are taking this thing from running driving 5.3 to running driving 6.2 in a week. Major changes along the way, drive by wire, fuel surge tank, different clutch, different, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff, the car's been completely torn down. We're putting it back together. We got it running yesterday. Uh, we still need to iron out some kinks with the way it runs finish putting it back together and go drive it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tidy up the rest of the car, button everything up, and we're gonna go take it for a rip and then add even more upgrades uh, that are pretty exciting that I'm hyped about. So that being said, let's get into it. Went ahead and got my front tires mounted. Just need a little more front grip for me to be like what I like. So anyway, we're gonna put all those on because we've gotta take these by tens off. We've got another set with burn tires. We got freaking 245s <laughs> to go on those. This will be the first time really in a long time that I've had 245s in this car. I'm trying out these Hankook RS4s because uh, what I normally run is the 225 Federals. Uh, there's, there's a burn set because um, they're like 90 to 100 bucks a tire. These are like 125 a tire. And I have a feeling they might last longer enough to offset the extra cost and have more grip. Uh, but I don't know, the only way to find out is to try them. So I'm gonna be trying those on my buy 10s for the comp. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, we're gonna finish mounting the rest of the tires for the event later, but for now we're gonna get wheels on the car and we can do the front end then we can get it on the ground, make it easier to do the interior, so on and so forth. Let's get back to it. We'll just do the old snap -rooski. Alrighty, new wheels are on, well, old wheels. Wheels, in general, are on. New front tires are on. Hopefully this can, oh yeah, we're good, it goes on. I was gonna say, hopefully it can squish down enough to fit, but it, are, it fits just fine. Like I said, I do have the LS31 coming. Should be here in a day or two. Obviously that's a quick and easy thing to swap over. So, not the big deal. Come on out of there, bud. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I put this line on with this already in here. I have to take this one off. All right. Normally I run this under, but then it gets caught on the water pump pulley. So for now I'm gonna leave it like that. One thing I do need to do, honestly, is go ahead and pull these valve covers off, pull these coil packs off, and swap on my old valve covers, my old coil packs for my dry sump breather. Um, so just to get us by through this event, that way I have the breather set up deal already on there and then I'll have to add a breather to one of these valve covers and change the lineup. And they're on. If you're wondering why we have 101 Dalmatian valve covers, it's because this engine with the rectangle port heads, it, the rocker arms are, are not evenly spaced like they are on this Johnny. So uh, yeah, moral of the story is it wouldn't fit. So I had to use one of the stock valve covers I got with this engine for this side. Luckily the one that did fit is this one with the AN fitting that I needed for my breather line. So we're good. Like I said, we'll have to tackle that project. You know, I want to take my time on it, make it nice and plan out the best spot to put that line and whatever. I don't want to rush through it. So for now, this will get us by and we'll mess with that stuff later. Uh, okay, front bumper. Front bumper is on. I went ahead and bled the clutch. If you guys saw um, earlier in this uh, one week rebuild series, we put this four foot remote bleeder line on. So I had a one foot one before, you had to have two people bleed it from under the car with the long one like this. I literally just stick it in the, like open the bleeder, put it in the fluid in the master and just pump it through. And it pumps all the air out, close it, done. So really, really handy to be able to like bleed it yourself. And then it kind of works out. I got this little clip here. Boom, clip the line and we're done, boys. Fluid is <laughs> dirty because there was still some dirty stuff in the line. I should have cleaned it out better, but it is what it is. We're done though. Clutch is bled. All right, time to drain the trans. Little tip when it comes to this. That's freaking drain plug, so it's messed up. Uh, little tip, like diff, trans, always take the fill plug out first, just to make sure that you can get it out because if you drain it and you can't get the fill plug out, then you have no fluid, so. God, why are these so tight? I tightened them, so I can't blame anybody but myself. Shouldn't be a whole ton left in here. I already drained most of it. Or well, most of it came out when I was putting the trains on, rather. We not act like I actually remembered to drain it. All right, see if we can, minimal mess here. Got it. That looks clean. Yeah, I mean, I could have just topped this off instead of uh, doing new fluid, but 
it's one of those things like you don't like generally change it otherwise so motor has been in and out might as well put some fresh fluid in it let that drain fill up this big thing and then i have this little pump and then i pump it up into the side of the transmission let's fill her up and i'll just be doing this for uh quite a while it shouldn't be too bad with this fluid because it's not too thick you do like a heavyweight gear oil it takes forever i mean it takes forever either way Marianne's fluid is filled. So we are done under here. I still need to put my skid plate back on, which covers all of this stuff, uh, but I don't want to put it on until we've ran it a bit. That way I can make sure, you know, we don't have any leaks. The problem with that skid plate is it does hide wheat. Yeah, I think we're ready to drop her down onto the ground and we can dive into the interior, get that together and go drive it. Exciting times, <laughs> exciting times. One week end to end. She's back on the ground, new motor, new fuel system, drive-by wire, different ECU. I mean, that's really not bad for working 100% solo. <laughs> Cannot complain. Definitely went better than expected. I shouldn't say that because then we'll run into some last minute complications, but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna put the dash back in, put the tombstone, just button all this up real quick and we'll go from there. I don't know if the camera Picked how much gnarlier this sounds than the 5.3 did. cooling system now so to bleed our cooling system before I had an expansion tank here uh, which brought my fill point up above the highest point of the cooling system because my radiator being tucked under the core support is lower than the highest point of the cooling system you can't bleed all the air out yada yada I built this expansion tank while I blew it up uh, going a little too hard at the old freedom factory so I don't have one right now and I didn't really have time to build a new one but this honestly works pretty well so it's a funnel it goes on with a cap. There's a bunch of different caps and basically if you fill it up It's higher than the highest point of the cooling system and you can bleed it out properly It's honestly nice even if I even when I do have my expansion tank back in I'll probably do it this way Because uh, you can really see like that air is still coming out So you can fill it up three quarters of the way and just watch the bubbles come out So basically we fill it up until there's no more air coming out then we start it and watch it same thing and then once all that's done, we put the cap back on, call it good. something I noticed problem we ran into uh, I think I've always had one on this side uh, but it seems really bad now there is a massive exhaust leak coming from the where the header meets the collector there you can feel it with your hand with it running like you can just feel 
the exhaust coming out. The problem is these are G8 manifolds and these like normally have like a, a thing with like a donut crush sleeve thing. So it's kind of hard to find the right gasket. I kind of have to like look through the gaskets at a store and find the right, anyway. Moral of the story is we need to replace that gasket, but obviously everything is nice and toasty now that we let it idle up to temp. So we just put some welding gloves on. So I didn't get any, oh, we can check for our leaks while we're under here. We got a little bit out of that guy. Let's tighten that up. Well, I did manage to find a gasket that will work at the auto parts store. This one was close, but it's a little too small. Unfortunately, I'd like that style better. I need to order, well, okay. So it doesn't really matter because I pulled the exhaust off so I could clean the flanges because I forgot to do that. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but let me zoom in on it for you. She is cracked almost all the way around. That happened to the other side and I had to get it welded up at the track because I didn't have a welder with me. So I'm gonna take weld this back up uh, just as a temporary measure, new gaskets, clean, clean surfaces, put it all back together. And uh, when we have some time, this is one of the things I wanted to do. Uh, I wanna weld V-bands on here and up here. On the things I wanted to do while I was doing this motor swap, but obviously we're doing it in a week, we kind of had to pick and choose the things we wanted to do. I can't do everything. And there's, there's other stuff like interior stuff I've got to do. And anyway, jabbering on. I'm gonna get this one out, we're gonna weld that up, we're gonna clean it up, we're gonna put it all back together, we're gonna hope we don't have any leaks. I'm pretty sure that one has been leaking for a long time, should make sense, because it always sounded like I had a leak, but I checked the gaskets and whatever. Um, so at least I'm glad we found it and are fixing it. So, can't complain about that. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get to welding and uh, fixing this stuff. <laughs> I remember the guy who built my exhaust originally had a really hard time welding these flanges. And uh, yeah, they do not weld well. It's interesting, the regular steel TIG rod actually worked better than stainless. So I don't know if they're just not stainless or what. I just, like I said, I remember when the guy built my exhaust, uh, I was there and he was like, this is horrible. Like, these are not welding well. And then one broke, had a guy fix it at Grid Live. Now I'm fixing it. Can confirm, does not weld well. <laughs> but I mean, I think we got it fixed enough. Definitely something we are gonna have to change in the very near future, but we definitely don't have time to do it before this event. Also, you can see how the crack goes all the way through, boom, comes over here and then out. Um, so this side was up a little higher, which is why our exhaust, so we are basically leaking out, like this is uh, like towards the wheel, and in from the crack to the inside. It's leaking like crazy, man. Uh, but anyway, I'm just kind of grinding it down enough to try to hopefully a little west of a gap between here and here, but I don't know. Like I said, this just has to get us through the event. So it should be good enough to get us through. I'm gonna throw it back on. We're gonna fire it back up and see how much it's still leaking. Definitely still gonna leak some. Cross your fingers for me. <laughs> it's only in the back little corner now of the flange, but it's still leaking and it's leaking a tiny bit on the other side too. So I figured out the idling thing. Matt Happel explained it well. Basically I just had to change the ramp to say like 0% throttle, have the throttle blade open this much. Uh, anyway, we will have to go back and do that again with the new throttle body. So I didn't put too much time into it, but I've got it idling good. So we're good there. Uh, yeah, otherwise I think we're good. <laughs> uh, oil's full. Fuel system seems to be working, seems to be running good, fans work. We're gonna go drive it. We got a break in the rain. Every time I'm, I was about to drive it a minute ago and then it started raining. So we've got a break in the rain. We gotta we gotta take our chance. We gotta shoot our shot. We gotta go drive this thing. Obviously, it's not gonna be the best test drive because it's wet. And uh, you know, we're not gonna have any traction anyway, so we're not gonna be able to see like how much less traction we have with the extra power than we did before with the 5.3, but I'm sure we'll get an idea of how rowdy it's gonna be. Find out. All right, moment of truth time. Can't go far because Ben's not home, so if we break down, we're kind of screwed. 
really hope we don't break down. <laughs> oh man, I just thought about that. Not successful first drive, that is for sure. It goes down in the history books as one of the one of the poor first drives of my YouTube life career. It was the uh or at least part of the problem was the coil backgrounds. They had gotten what seemed like tight when I put them on, but they I could move the wire. And that will give you a lot of problems.
drive because I kept like letting out of it at like 4,000 RPM. I was like, this thing really doesn't feel that crazy. I mean, obviously, it's like I said, the difficulty is it's wet. So like, you definitely can't really tell how much more powerful it is than the 5.3 because the 5.3 would definitely spin the tires in the wet too. I mean, I can tell it's, it's, it's peppy because it snaps the, the power up. But again, it's hard to tell. Well, hopefully maybe it stops or anything by tonight and uh, take a night drive and really be able to get after it. Got all my tires mounted for the event. We're good there. Car is essentially wrapped up. I want to spend a little more time driving it before the event, but I mean, I got the roof back on, I got the carpet back in. Everything seems to be good to go. Again, I want to take some more time and drive it. I do need to, again, change that throttle body. A couple other little tinkery stuff, so we'll keep messing with it. So I'm not going to end this video here. I want to drive it more. I want to drive it in the dry. It's not fair to you guys and even myself, you know, to have just that crappy rain drive where it just spins every gear. We need to see what this thing can do with at least relatively dry pavement. I mean, it was it was barely damp, but still, I, I wanna see what it'll do on dry pavement. With the 225s on the back, I went ahead and switched to the 225 Sticky Boys. So with some grip, with no rain, we gotta see what this thing will do. So I'll pick this back up whenever that is, cause it might not be, you know, who knows if it's just gonna keep raining. So yeah. I'll be back. All right, well, hasn't rained overnight, so we got a shot at a dry drive. So letting this thing warm up and we're gonna go take it for a rip without water all over the road. Wish me luck. <laughs> Let's freaking do it, boys. Well, we have been graced with an extra day's time to knock out the finishing touches on this thing. We got it to the point where like it's ready to go compete, but there is some stuff that I want to get handled. There's some stuff I want to take care of. It's the thing I'm most excited about, new seat. I have wanted a real bride seat for a very, very long time, um, and I just never pulled the trigger on one. So I put an eBay bride in this car. I tried a couple different seat options, and none of them got me low enough, but the bride without the pad, I can sit low enough. I'm super low, my head's below the cage, I'm comfortable. So. I had the fakes in here and I bought a real one. Uh, but this is the new generation. That's how you know it's not fake. And we got freaking JDM bride freaking lettering. We got a bride sticker. That's probably worth freaking $40. <laughs> uh, it's cool though to have like a real, I don't know, it, one of those things, one of those nerd parts I've always wanted. Finally said, screw it. It's the only seat that fits in the car. Might as well buy a real one. Fake one on the passenger side. This Johnny in the driver's side. Got a nice silver back. So I'm excited about this. So this is this is what we're gonna do first because I really want to get this done. The real test will be see if we fit with the helmet and the padding. I don't feel super high up. Definitely under the top bar. I don't know, we'll try it with the padding and it's obviously easy enough to take it out. Not messing with this one, I'll put the other one in. 
All right, he got the passenger seat in as well. That one doesn't look bad. It's really cool seeing both brides in there, especially knowing that that one's a real one. Looks so good. I'm so excited about that, man. Again, one of those things, I wanted to get a real bride for a long, long time, and I've been meaning to put my passenger seat back in for a long time as well, so. Got both of them done. Sweet, now we can move on. Another project on the to-do list that I've been putting off, I need to get at least one put together, spare axles. The fact that we didn't break axles before does not at all guarantee that we will not break axles now, so. I'm gonna dive into this, get it done. Job done, axle's built. I'm really excited about that. We'll have a spare axle this time. It would just suck to be like practicing or whatever and break an axle and then be out for the weekend because I didn't have my spares with me that I have all the parts to fix. We finally got a test drive in the dry. Uh, we know everything's pretty much solid. Everything seemed fine. Temps were good. Charges, runs good. Like I said, when we change that to that LS3 throttle body, we will have to kind of retune the throttle body. Uh, but other than that, I mean, she's pretty pretty well ready to go. Pretty well ready to go. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty exciting. One weekend to end, literally like, like exactly seven days is what it took. And that was the two half days because I had to handle other stuff and editing and all that stuff, so. Really, really not bad at all. I, I'm stoked. I mean, projects like this, you never expect them to go well. Like, if you've done enough of them, you're like, there's no way it's gonna get done in a week. It should get done in a week. In my mind, it should get done in a week, but never does. So the fact that we did get it done and we are ready to go with a week to spare, we got time to work on Cleus's drift fat, like, I'm stoked. So that's pretty much the end of the uh, rebuild aside from that stuff. So I just wanna say thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys for the drift fat build and clutch kickers. You do not wanna miss that. I mean, more powerful car, bigger tires. Like, we have every capability to win. It's going to be all on uh, me as a driver to, to do it, to make it happen. So there's no more excuses. So I'll see you guys for that. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.